history of computers this chapter is for class 5 computer science and i am your instructor bharat so let's begin what are we going to learn in this chapter we are going to learn several topics namely who invented the computer okay then we'll come to the early computing devices all the calculating devices that have been developed in the in the history of computer <clears throat> generally the different generations of computer namely the first second third fourth and fifth generation then we are going to compare the different generations of computer basic characteristics of computer the computer that you are using what are the basic characteristics of such machine then some of the limitations also we shall discuss the limitations of computer <clears throat> so the question is who invented the computer is there a single person or is there a single invention that have resulted in the modern day computer well we all know that the modern day calculating and data processing machine that you uh, that you call as computer is not the result of an overnight invention or a single inventor there was uh, no there was never a single person or a single inventor which resulted in the modern day computer that you see around you number of inventors and inventions contributed towards the de development of modern day computer a computer is basically a device that helps you to perform calculations early computing devices so let us discuss over here what were the first what were the what were the initial calculating devices in the history of computer the first device was known as abacus it was developed around 5000 years ago in china <clears throat> as you can see in the picture it was made up of a wooden frame with rods each rods having number of beads the beads were manipulated using fingers and this device could perform calculations like addition subtraction multiplication and division so basic arithmetic was uh, can be carried out in this uh, kind of device it was a very simple device but it helped the mankind to perform calculations in his or her day to day lives on to the second invention <clears throat> the picture that you see uh, in in your screen is on your screen is napier's bones this napier bones as you can see these were multiplication tables it was developed by sir john napier who was a french mathematician in the year 1614 simple multiplication tables etched onto bones or wooden bars the name napier bones this you know uh, this invention al allowed uh, mankind to perform calculations like addition subtraction multiplication and division Uh, manipulation of these sticks these bars allowed us to calculate any number of calculations the third device that you see on your screen this was the first mechanical device known as pascaline or pascaline calculator it was invented in the year 1642 by blaise pascal he was also a mathematician this device consisted of eight wheels it was a box structure containing eight moving wheels <clears throat> it was capable of performing addition and subtraction remember this was the first mechanical device mechanical means it it had moving parts the next device we are looking uh, the next device we are looking at is leibniz calculator you can see the picture of it it was actually an improved version of the earlier pascaline that we have just seen it was invented by another mathematician gottfried w leibniz in the year 1671 so you can see the pattern all these devices were invented by mathematicians and scientists and these devices the only job these devices had was to perform calculations as i told you it was an improved version of the pascaline calculator it was capable of performing addition subtraction multiplication and division so pascaline could only perform addition and subtraction but this device could perform multiplication and division and you can you can see the design of it the next 
the next two devices were known as difference engine and analytical engine these two engines were developed by charles babbage in the year 1822 and 1833 respectively and charles babbage is also known as the father of computer why he is known as the father of computer because the device the engine that he built was capable of taking inputs processing data delivering output and also it was capable of storing data so all the four functions that you uh, do that you carry for uh, carry out in the modern day computer this machine this device was capable of and here are the pictures the first picture is of the analytical engine the second picture is of the difference engine actually it's a real world real world scale, a real one to one scale model of a difference engine placed in a museum in england you can see the picture of it next we come to the electronic era so prior to this prior to eniac and univac which we are going to discuss just now all these devices were mechanical now we come to the uh, now we come to the era of electronic devices <clears throat> so eniac and univac were the two general purpose electronic computer developed by sir jp eckert and j mockley in the year 1946 and 1951 respectively as i told you these were the first general purpose electronic computers the full form eniac stands uh, stood for electronic numerical integrated and calculator and univac stands for universal automatic computer these computers were huge these computer required large rooms and large air conditioning in order for the operator to use and these were very expensive mostly for the research purposes but they were first general purpose electronic computers and you can see the picture of the two scientists and here <coughs> on the left side we have the eniac and on the right side we have the univac please ignore the uh, wrong titling which is analytical engine and difference engine the titling is wrong now we are going to discuss the different generations of computer first generation computers the computers around the timeline 1940 to 1956 were known as first generation computers these computer used vacuum tubes as their main components you can see the picture of the vacuum tubes on your screen because of these components computers were huge they were very expensive they generated lot of heat they required they consumed lot of electricity and some of the examples of the first generation computer are univac and eniac and edvac i have already shown you the picture of univac and eniac moving on as we uh, and you can see the picture of uh, on one side we have eniac and on the other side we have univac you can see the scale you can see the size how big these computers were these were not at all capable but for the time they were very very advanced <clears throat> coming on to the second generation of computer the timeline for these computers were 1956 to 1963 the computers around the timeline 1956 to 1963 these computers were known as second generation computers well they used transistors the picture of uh, transistor you can see over here as their main components computers relatively became smaller and faster compared to the previous generation that means the first generation computer they still consumed a lot of electricity they still generated lot of heat but relatively comparatively lesser amount of heat and lesser amount of electricity they could consume <clears throat> some of the examples were univac 3 ibm 1401 cdc 3600 these were some of the examples of the second generation computer and let me show you the pictures so <coughs> over here you can see the two pictures on the right hand side we have ibm 1401 and on the left side we have ibm 
coming on to the third generation computer the timeline for third generation computer was 1964 to 1971 these computers used ICs integrated circuits so with the different generations that technology kept progressing obviously this led to computer being smaller and faster <clears throat> they generated less heat they consumed less electricity compared to the previous generation that means the second generation and univac 900 IBM 360 ICL 1900 these were some of the examples of the third generation computers and over here you can see the pictures of the third generation computer you can observe the computers are getting smaller and efficient and faster all right <clears throat> coming on to the fourth generation of computer the timeline for it is 1972 to present to present day computing introduction of microprocessors you can see a picture of the microprocessor on the screen <coughs> it it led to the development of more affordable smaller form factor and exponentially faster computers the concept of internet and networking was also introduced in this generation all right so computer could be connected with each other some of the early <coughs> fourth generation computers were apple 2 ibm pc mits altair these were also known as personal computers personal meaning any person any normal person could buy these computer for their own purposes and here you can see the picture of two computers they are relatively incredibly smaller because of the invention of the microprocessor apple 2 we have and to the right side we have ibm pc so the uh, this fourth generation computer ushered in the era of personal computing anybody could afford computers for their homes coming to the fifth generation computers the timeline for it was is present to future well look around you look around the devices that you see around you laptop smartphone smart watches so this generation also introduced artificial intelligence means computers are able to take decisions on their own and machine learning the concept of machine learning was also introduced computers obviously became smarter and faster speech and voice recognition became mainstream have you ever used okay google have you ever used uh, <clears throat> any kind of voice recognition or speech recognition application onto your smartphone you, you must have used powerful computing at, at an affordable and compact form factor the smart watch can be worn onto your wrist a smartphone is very compact a laptop is very compact and these computers are incredibly powerful compared to the previous generation computer smartphones smart watches tablets pcs laptops are some of the examples of fifth generation computing and you can see the picture of some of the computers belonging to this generation here we have a smart watch to the left and to the right we have a tablet also known as tablet computer now let's recap so here's a table <coughs> as you can see in the first generation we had vacuum tubes as main component as the main technology in second generation we had transistors third generation we had integrated circuits that is the ic's fourth generation we had microprocessors fifth generation we have we had artificial intelligence and machine learning and if you could carefully observe the computer the computers with each generation they kept getting faster they kept uh, getting smaller and they are getting affordable more affordable for the common person so let us now discuss the basic characteristics of computer we all know that computers can perform any task with incredible amount of speed so they are very very fast computers generally do not perform mistakes they are highly accurate machines that is why we use them we can store large amount of data 
so we ha you have incredible amount of storage capability diligence computer can run for hours and hours it will never ask for food it never gets tired so computer is quite diligent versatility it means computers are used in many many areas of your life computers can be seen uh, can be seen use, uh, using uh, can be <coughs> found at homes schools offices so computers are used in many many places reduction in paperwork is a good thing for the environment if more and more digital devices are being used the need for paperwork is <clears throat> the need for paperwork is getting reduced some uh, we also have some limitations uh, within a computer computer can only uh, perform a task which is programmed and computer cannot operate without the user's instruction so these are the few limitations not, not a lot of limitations but these are few of the limitations within a computer